Friday is here with us again, and we bring you another exclusive edition of Sports Today Live here on Joy Sports and Multi TV. My name is Kwame Jumo Ajman, and on this day, as we build up to the biggest game in Ghanaian football, it's going to be one massive one at the Accra Sports Stadium that game between Kumasi Asante Kotoko and Accra Hatabuk. And we are going to be building up to this game on all the Joy Sports platforms on TV, on radio, and of course, online. We're also going to be building up to the big boxing bout coming up later this evening. We get to see Bukom Banku again in action. How is he going to be performing? This time well our cameras were at the way we're going to be bringing you that as uh, well and uh, of course uh, there is a news concerning referee Roger Bano now he happened to be the man in the center of the bout uh, involving Emmanuel Otego and uh, Ronald Pontias of Philippines and he's come under the microscope for um, his uh, performance on that day where well, we caught up with him as well and would listen to his side of the story. We'd also be keeping tabs on Ghanaian players like we do on the show all the time. We're building up to two massive games coming up in June against Lesotho and of course against uh, Sudan and we'll be keeping tabs on our Ghanaian players on the African continent CAF Champions League matches coming up thus a week. We'll be bringing you those fixtures and we'll be going into Europe where the two German clubs have made it to the final of the UEFA Champions League is Bayern Munich who will be taking on Borussia Dortmund and Wembley on May the 20th faith and of course in the Europa League is going to be Benfica against Chelsea. All those and more coming up after this break. We're back for the final edition of the show of those a week. And as usual, we start with the sporting tabloids. Uh, this morning, I have the graphic sports. And of course, at the 90 minutes, and it's all about the big game in Ghana later those a week. And it's going to be that game involving Kumasi, Asante Kotoko, and Accra Hatsubuk. And later this evening as well, we get to see the man, Bukum Banku, in action. And as usual, we start with the stories on the uh, sporting tabloids we do have for today. On the front page of, of the graphic sports, I have Clash of the Titans. And it's going to be that game involving Kumasi, Asante Kotoko, and Accra Hearts of Vogue. Both teams are more than ready for action. Kumasi, Asante Kotoko looking at uh, retaining the league of that season. Accra Hearts of Vogue also looking at getting maximum points from the uh, game. Kofi Intibuache uh, there with uh, Mahatma Otu also on the front page of uh, that paper and you have clash of the titans as a heart kotoko shake Accra. well the fans i know are going to be trooping into the stadium in your thousands to go and uh, cheer their sights to victory also on the front page of uh, the paper well you have uh, the the lads who made things happen for the german clubs that have qualified for the final of the uefa champions league it's going to be that man uh iron robin against uh, robert Lewandowski. The two teams have made it to the final of the UEFA Champions League. Made it 25th as the final at Webley. And uh, Bukum Banku explodes uh, tonight. Well, we're the way in. We're going to be bringing you pictures of all that transpired. And then, of course, Paolo Maldini, an icon, a gentleman. That's going to be on the lifestyle page of the paper. Moving on, then uh, we move uh, straight to the lifestyle page. And uh, it's that man, the former AC Milan center half and uh, full back Paolo Maldini played for AC Milan for many 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 years and uh, well the pictures that uh, put his career in that perspective well seen here with his uh, family and uh, numerous awards that he won during his uh, career We move on to the center spread, and uh, well, uh, it's all about uh, the big games that were played in Europe this uh, week. Uh, the scenes from the UEFA Champions League and uh, how some of the clubs were disappointed. That there are uh, pictures of uh, those games involving Real Madrid and Borussia Dortmund, and of course, uh, that game between Football Club Barcelona and uh, Bayern Munich, the two German clubs making it to the final of uh, the UEFA Champions League. And there are pictures there of uh, some Barcelona players, Alex Song, David Villa, and uh, Thiago Alcantara, and uh, that man, Ika Casillas, who was not in action for Real Madrid on uh, Tuesday, consoling his uh, skipper for the night, Sergio Ramos. And there are also scenes uh, from the game involving Bayern Munich and Barcelona.
And there are some fact files in there of uh, that man, Christian Benteke, only 22 years old with a massive hit for Aston Villa, scoring up to 22 goals in our competition for the Villa Club. That's the man celebrating one of his goals that he scored for Aston Villa this season. So grab a copy of the graphic sports and get to read a lot more on these stories. And let's quickly move on to the back page of the graphic sports. And you have a Bukum Banku explodes tonight. Well, he's up against a gentleman from uh, Georgia. And uh, that bout will be coming on later this evening. If you don't have your tickets, try and get one. 10 Ghana CD, 30 Ghana CD for ringside. And uh, go have fun later this evening. Bukum Banku explodes tonight. Well, he's not been seen in the ring for some time. And Ghanaians, I'm sure, will be excited seeing uh, this man in the ring yet again. And you have Clash of the Titans. Preview there by Andy Kwao. And it's all about that game involving Kumasi Asante Kotoko and Accra Hatawuk. What do you make of this game? Well, we can have your views of our text on your screen at the moment. 1760 is a text line. It's going to cost you a cool 30 uh, pesos. And uh, I'll be glad to read those text messages on the show for you. So that's it for the graphic sports. Uh, we move on to the 90 minutes. And you better the 90 minutes have got pictures of uh, all the lads who make things happen in the world of football and um there are some Ghanaian players in there as a usual you have ACN's new deal well we understand that he's not uh going to be staying with Real Madrid come the end of the season so where is the man going to go is he going to end up back in the camp of Chelsea or is he going to find himself somewhere else we'll see more about this particular story Messi believes in a Barca dream and your Falcao to Chelsea is a done deal. And uh, the wag of Mario Balotelli, also on the front page of the paper, you have a Mario Balotelli dumps wag funny. Well, I thought it was the other way around. There are some Ghanaian players in the mix as uh, well. Andre Dede, are you? Almost always are uh, on the front page of the 90 minutes. Chest Fabregas together with uh, Sule Muntari and quite a number of players. And uh, grab a copy of your 90 minute sports paper and get to see a lot more of these uh, stories. Quite a number of stories on Ghanaian players and their performance in Europe as the major league is uh, coming to an end. The center spread of the 90 minutes has a very interesting picture that I would want you to catch up with. And it's a picture of the Boating brothers. Um, Prince is there. Jerome is there as well. And incidentally, all three siblings are from three different mothers. Mm. Doesn't come <laughs> any interesting than that. Uh, two of these uh, players playing for high prof uh, profile clubs in Germany and in Italy. Uh, the one, other one doing his own uh, business. Oh, good to see our uh, sponsors Nike bringing the Boating brothers together. Okay, so that's it for the 90 minutes. Get a copy of uh, the newspaper and get to read a lot more on uh, these stories. As we build up to the big game coming up later this weekend, it's going to be that game involving Kumasi, Asante Kotoko, and Accra Hato Vok. And uh, well, I'm sure for the numerous faithfuls of the two clubs out there, you're going and uh, getting your tickets for the game. We understand that there are already tickets uh, that are selling in various outlets. So if you're a fan of these two clubs, make your way to these. Uh, advertised uh, places and uh, you go get your ticket for this uh, big game coming up later this uh, weekend. But before we go a lot more into that game, let's start the show on some boxing note because that man, that entertainer, Bukum Banku, is going to be act in action later this uh, evening. And uh, well, yesterday we were at the way in and uh, we bring you excerpts of what transpired there. Countries of our generals, George Deborah Billy from Georgia is on the scale. One nine eight pounds. One nine eight pounds, exactly. Please put your hand. You say? Okay, so what are the officials of George? 
So is it true? Yes. Are you okay? Please put hands together for Brahma Kamoko. Now, Brahma, and uh, can I, can I? Oh, I'm ready to move as well as the farmers and trainers. Because I know that you guys are good boss. I want you to the television. We have the correct blue, everything fitness, and I'm feeling out for this guy to stop and do a hit on that. But the group of body can happen. Today you were able to scale through the weights. There was nothing like you going to come back. Are you happy about this? Oh, I made the uh, light weight already. This was the official weight. That is winning the 95. I'm winning 91. This one. He got accredited before the body is extracted. Okay, are you stopping him or are you going to go to the ramps? Hey, right. Well, and you can always uh, trust uh, that man, Bukum Banku, for his uh, antics and, of course, uh, his uh, proverbs. Uh, he had one interesting one to share with us yesterday, and I'm sure the bigger one is going to be later this evening when he mounts the ring uh, to take on his Georgian opponent. He's encouraging all Ghanaians uh, to come cheer him up at the stadium because he wants to be Ghana's world champion. That bout is going to be in the cruiserweight division. Not too many Ghanaians of that stature um, who can fight in that division. We have one in there, and we need to go and support him. Of course, there are going to be some supporting bouts in there as well. So make your way to the Accra Sports Stadium later this evening. Ten Ghana City, we understand it's going to be what is, uh, will be charged for the popular stand and up to 30 Ghana City for the VIP and ringside. And I'm sure that's uh, pretty affordable. We stay with the uh, boxing and uh, the man who is going to make sure that everything comes to uh, plan is uh, that man, uh, Mr. Mike Tete, who happens to be the CEO of uh, Golden Mike Promotions. Joy Sports uh, caught up with him to to see how preparations are going for the spouse, and this is what he had to say. I'm expecting the son to shoot to the stadium tomorrow, very I mean, early enough to have a good shoot because Bama Tamoko is temporary to be some new to West. Uh, Lady Saita, Ellen Joseph, residing in Ghana, uh, domiciled in Ghana, being managed by Golden Market Promotions, is an agent, and, and he is fighting for the IPF Female Featherweight Championship. It has never happened before in the annals of Ghana history. So I, I'm pleased to all and Sandu to come to have a feel of that female championship. What about the um, boxers on the bill? What do you make of the African? The yeah, preparations are far advanced, and I think every, everything points positively to the good show, and they are all going to be happy after tomorrow. The numbers would make a, a big difference to um, this uh, promotion. What do you make of the publicity so far? The publicity has gone very far. As far as you guys are concerned, we've done marvelously well for me. All of you, the media guys, we've done so well for me. I'm very grateful to you. What about ticket prices? Ticket prices are 10 cities for a couple of and then 30 for the inside. Do you have any plans to bring in um, other people from the entertainment world to also showcase their powers? No, no, this time no. Okay, so you have the uh, CEO of uh, Golden Mike uh, Promotions. He's saying that all except for the uh, major bout later this evening is going to be the man, uh, Buko Mbanku, who is going to be the main event of uh, the night. He's up against his opening from uh, Georgia, and you trust your sports that we're definitely going to be there to bring you all of the action from uh, the Accra Sports Stadium. We're staying with uh, boxing, and for those of you who were in the stop out between Emmanuel Ortego and uh, Ronald Pontias of the uh, Philippines last week, there have been a lot of talk about the performance of the referee on that night. It was our referee, Rosa 
Zabano. He has up to 17 years' experience in the uh, profession. We caught up with him to hear his side of the story concerning how people are tongue lashing him for his performance on the night. I wasn't on board. I wasn't on fish. I wasn't on fish. But what I have to tell you now, I was in the ring of fish. I was in the ring doing my job. I have been in the game for too long. For my 15, 16, 17 years, I have been in the game. And I have worked so hard to get to where I am now. So I can never lose one single you know, fight just to spoil my image or tarnish my own, just to soil away with them. what I have been able to achieve for far too long. And it's like what happened in the ring was I was doing my job. We got something called the ropes, the ropes prevented him from falling. So had it not been the rope, the counter that I counted from the last, had it not been the ropes, he could have fallen down. And there is something called sleep. If the boxer sleeps, it's not a lockdown. It was where the punches are, legal punches and non-legal punches. So if you hit a boxer with an, 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 an illegal punch and he goes down, it's a no lockdown. If it sleeps, it's a no lockdown. So actually, I really don't understand what is happening. Well, have you had the chance to uh, feel the tip after the boss? Uh, the boss uh, to see whether actually on the point you miss some of this on the Actually, I was, I was, I was, I was um, just right after the game, me and the three judges and the supervisor, we were there. What the supervisor who was this man, who, what he told me was, thanks, Roger, you were, on, you were on top of the game, you were in charge. So I don't really, I don't really understand. I don't really understand what is happening with the media. With the media, there are some people coming from Kumasi all over the world, uh, all over Greater the region. They, not, they know nothing about the game. They just they are spectators. When someone say A, they say A. So it's better they come on board. So they, are you taking only one mistake or whatever in the game to to to, to away your profession? No, no, it's not my profession. Actually, I had I had a TikTok, I had a chat, a lengthy chat, and a lengthy meeting with my family members yesterday, and they asked. Me to quit, so I'm, 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 I'm meeting to the advice and then calling me to quit. Because someone has been attacking you for the way you handle the bank? Well, that's, that, 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 that's what my family means. I think I did my job and I did it to the best of my knowledge. I did it best the way I want to do. Because I, actually, Tego is in the ring doing his job. I'm in the ring doing my job. Pontlas is in the ring doing his job. So I can't overlook someone's job for my job. I have my job as state. So but you understand me. there's always uh, the bad side or the good side in every endeavor. I know, but why can't you advise? Why can't you let your family understand this and move ahead with your 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 uh, choosing uh, 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 career? Because somebody like Asuma, who is a layman, who doesn't know anything about the rules, he's just a bossa. Go on there, talking trash about me. My lessons should be redrawn, which is unfair. When he does something that is not being done in the ring, that someone call call for his license to be run with, to be withdrawn. Are you when afraid he, that I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not afraid that my license will be will be withdrawn. No, I'm not afraid. I don't think I have done anything that warrants my license to be withdrawn. But what is happening on the air is what my family members have advised me. So I'm I'm heading to my family's advice. The, the microphones hit you a few times, and uh, for those who understand that. The whole idea was you were the most of the coaching mother to go as you want to do. Yeah, remember what you said. Remember, at, at, the, at both corners of the buses, they got microphones stationed at the corners. Remember, they should also remember the trainers of table that dance, these big guns. I can't be in the ring and then, and then be talking to the bosses. What I told table during the course of the fight was, raise your head up, keep your head up, which is in gun, which I said in gun. Who it on? Who it on? Who it on? And then it's slippery over here. Don't go here. Which I also told pointless in English. So I really don't understand what people are attributing. I wasn't talking to them. They should have. They should have a look at the tape once the fight is over. They should watch the table now and see if I was talking to table when I was officiating. It's only fair that you give uh, everyone the opportunity to defend himself. And yesterday, listening to what our referee Rujabano um, had to say, he was clearly um, not excited about what was said about him, especially um, comments attributed to the former uh, WBC Super Featherweight Champion Azuma Nelson that his license had to be withdrawn. Well, for those of us who were there and saw the bouts, I'm sure uh, we also have our comments concerning the referee and his performance, and especially that of the judges, who for me uh, were, were pretty, pretty poor on the night.
night and talking about the officiating and the way the judges went about uh, the bout as well. We caught up with the GBA president, lawyer Peter Zwenis, on what his uh, organization body is going to do about the way the uh, judges performed on the night. Yeah, officiating and scoring. We have invited uh, Reverend Barnard to appear before the board at today's meeting. Um, I don't want to prejudice the outcome of whatever we will do, but um, we will let the public know the outcome of our discussions. Um, the other issue, too, is that we have taxed our committees to be up and doing as far as their work is concerned. In fact, the committees will be inaugurated sometime next week. And I believe that when all the committees are working at full throttle, we should be able to see a lot of improvements in what is going on. As far as I know, with the rules of boxing, it will not affect the results of the fight. Uh, if anybody has to complain about the outcome of the fight, it has to be the opposing boxer who was at the receiving end of that. But we, as a local sanctioning body, have to bring our hearing members to book if they are found to be culpable in this respect. And that is precisely what we will be doing if they are found to be culpable. Unfortunately, the, the most bizarre of the scoring, the 118 115, was not even by a Ghanaian referee. It was by referee Adon Bettin of Benin. And we want to complain to his federation as well about that particular story. Uh, away from that particular story, for an international bout of this magnitude, there were two Ghanaian judges and the center of the referee also happened to be Ghanaian. Did you have any concerns about that particular fight? No, we, we did not. I think that... Um, Given certain constraints, it is sometimes possible for fights of this nature to be refereed and judged by referees and judges within a local jurisdiction. And I think that the opponent himself did not have any uh, reservations about that. There have been times when foreigners have fought in our rings and have had uh, very good decisions in their favor coming from our local referees. So we, as far as the competence of our local referees is concerned, we do not have any doubts about that. Our boxers also go to fight outside. Sometimes they fight for Commonwealth titles. And it's all British and Scottish referees in the UK. We also don't have a problem with that. The point is that everybody has to do his work well. And if everybody is uh, honest to himself, we'll have good results. We will not have these kind of situations. Well, so you had our lawyer, Peter Zwenes, on what he makes of the officiating of uh, the judges on the night, especially that of uh, Adun Betting of uh, Benin. He scored about 118 to 111, and you have to wonder which particular bout he was watching for him to come out with that verdict. The other referees, the other judges, sorry, on the night scoring about 116 to 112 and 115 to 115. Now, hopefully, we'll get a lot more quality judges to come and be officiating bouts here. I Away from uh, boxing now, let's do some bet on football. That big game coming up later this weekend that's going to be between Kumasi Asante Kotoko and Accra Heart of Oga. A lot of fans have been talking about this game. Officials of the two clubs have been heard on uh, the radio and TV platforms all through the week, uh, talking up their chances ahead of uh, this game. Well, we went out there on the street to speak to uh, fans of uh, the two clubs concerning this uh, massive uh, game that is coming up on uh, Sunday, and uh, they had some interesting comments to share with us. To see uh, who is going to win, it becomes very dicey. So for me personally, the time I bang my hope on Accra House of Owini, then the table turns and then it goes back to Kotoko. Or the time you are hoping that time, you see that this time Kotoko is doing very well. So I'm sure it's easy for them to beat a house of folk easily. But you go to the pitch, as you say, there's no logic in football. So it can turn in another way that Kotoko, a uh, house of folk, will win easily. Mm. So right now I cannot bank my rule on what it. So, so yes. Yes, because we've been saying that there's no logic in football and the things are changing in football nowadays. With the recent form houses, having well, I think two wins now the last two games I hope and it's in Accra too with the home support I think they, they win they, of late football is not telling us the truth with yesterday's match Barcelona and Barca yeah I feel hard as an edge yeah, that. and then has my team that's all be tough match since it's a Milan time they prayed so everybody's expecting tough match to be prayed Kotoko will surely win why? Because Kotoko now Kotoko is in form, so they, they can win this match. So now our team have built up. 
if you can see from 14 position, from uh, 14 to 8 position. So you can see that things are going on well. And then the FA Cup too, you can see that things are going well. So I know House definitely will win. A House of Folk will win. Um, I mean, I cry and I always would want to support House of Folk. Um, Kumasi should also be on their own, uh, but as long as I'm in Accra, I always would go with uh, Accra House of Folk. That is what they always say. Uh, I've always heard their comments, and they always say that. But at the end of the day, uh, it is not what you say that really plays the ball. It is the field and the people who play the ball that really um, um, do their thing. So it's not about lips. We have lip service. You can use your lips to play the ball, but at the end of the day, it is the pitch and the people. Uh, well, actually, the game will be 50-50. Uh, none of them, any man, uh, the person who plays better game can win. Has can win, Kotoko can win. It depends on the coaches and the tactics they are going to play and everything. And, and I'm, I'm pleading to the life free today be strong and doing everything. Nobody should go and bribe life free or the, uh, this. And the supporters, too, we are praying for them to be get calm and we'll see how the match will continue. But at the end of the, day, but at the, end of the 90 minutes, we'll see the winner and, and everybody will go and celebrate and win how it is. I'm a Kotoko fan and my, I want my team to carry the day. Ali Fiobe have told me already that they are going to win. To one, because he came to UFM, he, he talked a lot because he's I'm the one of the uh, uh, um, the secret man who always to park him in UF, in front of UFM. Yeah, so Ali Fobia, I'm with you. No bagger where you are. Not to waste about that. No Why you sure have Power. Why you it's sure? true because nowadays we know that we have certain. Well, the fans always have uh, something to say, especially for a big game of uh, this uh, magnitude. And I'm sure these fans are going to be making their way to the Accra Sports Stadium to uh, go cheer their fans up. Uh, some of them um, obviously belong to the camp of Accra Hartsburg. Some also belong to the camp of Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Who gets a result on Sunday? Well, let's wait and see what will transpire in the next 48 hours. And still on that game, now there's uh, one gentleman uh, who is uh, known to... Um, have his own way of motivating uh, the players of Kumasiya Sante Kotoko anytime they go out to play. And that gentleman is uh, Kempo. Now, um, as his usual way of motivating players and technical officials of our uh, champion club Kumasi Asante Kotoko to achieve uh, their ultimate, Mr. Kennedy in Japan has promised them 4,000 Ghana CD uh, to beat Hearts in the uh, Titanic League match in Accra on uh, Sunday. Now, Kempo, a former director of Kotoko, who served under the PV of being led board, said even though matches between Kotoko and Hearts do not yield the form guide, he was optimistic that his idol club would come out triumphant in Sunday's duel. Now, Kempong, who is also the CEO of Kempong Group of Companies, uh, which consists of um, airlines, construction, and uh, telecommunications, uh, was of the view that a win on Sunday could do wonders for the Porcupine Warriors in their quest for the double this year. Kennedy Japan, uh, who some have uh, often confused for the politician uh, namesake, appealed to followers of both clubs to let peace prevail before and after that match. The appeal was an apparent uh, reference to the May 9th disaster 12 years ago when about 127 fans uh, perished uh, following rowdism at the end of similar matches between the two rival clubs at the Accra Sports Stadium. Now, we stay with this uh, particular game, and uh, um, another former great of uh, the club has also been talking about this game. And this time around, we're going to be seeing the slide on the screens uh, pretty shortly. Um, Mr. Director, if you can ha uh, kindly help me with that. Uh, Mohamed Polo has uh, taped the crowd hard to work to put uh, their better rivals, Kumasiya Sante Kotoko, to the sword when the two giants meet in Accra on, s when the two giants meet in Accra on Sunday. Um, the country's version of El Clasico will be on display when Kotoko play as a guest of Hearts in the biggest match of the second round. Now, Hearts have been transformed under David Duncan and looks like a team on form, while the opponent has been inconsistent despite being fed on the table. Uh, fixtures are involving the two powerhouses do not follow the form guide. But the ex hearts grid believes the Capital Bay side would win the battle at the Accra Sports Stadium. Now, the corresponding fixture ended in a draw in November last year. But many uh, things have changed since uh, that time. And uh, we'll see 
how things change on Sunday. Now, still on this uh, game, and this time around, it happens to do with uh, the Kotoko boss, that is uh, Dr. K.K. Sapong. Um, what is he saying about this uh, game? Now, Kotoko chairman uh, Dr. K.K. Sapong has squashed reports that a club are interested in signing an expatriate coach. We'll be seeing that on the screen pretty shortly. Now, current coach Masood Didi Dramani has decided his... Uh, has had his future speculated for some time after the team's elimination from the CAF Champions League. Now, Kotoko's splattering performance in the Ghana Premier League has not convinced their followers, but the club are in third place and one point uh, behind leaders Mediama. Now, Dr. Sapon believes that the 2012 FIFA Under-17 World Cup winning bronze medal coach has garnered some decent results in his first season and may be allowed to continue next season. Still on our issues concerning Kumasi Asante Kotoko and Accra Hatsubuk, and this time it happens to be the young goalkeeper of uh, Kotoko by name uh, Felix Anan. And what's the latest concerning the uh, player? Now, Asante Kotoko goalkeeper Felix Anan has left Ghana to begin a trial session with Belgian side Club Brugge. Now, the 18 year old left the shores of Ghana on Tuesday to begin the two week trial with the Blue Box. Now, Anan obtained permission from Kotoko in order to take the trials in uh, Belgium. The ex Fete Feyenoord goalkeeper has played only two games this term for the Ghana Premier League champions. Now, he's down the pecking order at Kotko behind Abdullahi Sulama and Isaac Amwaku. Anan was part of the Ghana Under 20 team that finished second at the 2013 African Youth Championship hosted by Algeria. Let's now go on the phone lines now and get to speak to uh, a member of the communications team of Kumasi Asante Kotoko, Jerome Autry. Um, he was appointed uh, into this position um, somewhere last week, and I know he has a lot to say concerning this game. Jerome, good morning. Good morning, Kwame. And uh, thanks for making time to speak to us, Jerome. Let me start by asking you of uh, the mood in the camp ahead of uh, this Sunday's game. What, what's happening in the camp of Kumasi Asante Kotoko? Well, I can tell you that uh, Kotoko camp is very relaxed. The players are not under any pressure. The coaches, management members, everybody is calm because we see this game as one of those league matches which we must win. Of course, it's against Hatsu Folk, and when you are playing Hatsu Folk, you must make sure that everything is in order before you, you surge onto the field. And so we are calmly preparing, doing all the necessary things we have to do, and uh, latest by close of day or early tomorrow morning, we'll be storming Accra. When you say storming Accra, what exactly do you mean? Are you going to be coming with uh, 500 buses uh, uh, with fans <laughs> coming to cheer your team or what? <laughs> well, you can be sure that uh, the supporters of the club will be storming Accra in loads of buses. But for the players and the technical members, you know, uh, they... There's not going to be any, uh, any colorful entry into Accra. They will be coming quietly, as we normally do. And what's important for us is that we are going to play hard to folk, and we know we are beating them. You know you are beating them. Now, you are three points behind Mediama in the Global Premier League. If you drop any points on Sunday, they are going to be tearing away from you. There are not too many matches left if you would want to win the league and go back into Africa. I'm sure the approach for this game is going to be very, very, very big. Uh, Kwame, if you can come again, I didn't hear the last bit of your question. Well, I, I was saying that you are three points be, uh, behind Mediama, and if you drop any points on Sunday, um, the Taka Club are going to be tearing away if they happen to get a result over the weekend. So I'm sure the approach to this game is not going to be just like any other game. Uh, of course. I mean, this, this is a game against Hatsu Folk, and you and I know that uh, it's a game that comes with a lot of pressure. That is why we are happy that um, ahead of this game, we are not under any pressure. We have been able to prepare and, and do things uh, as if it's, it's one of those games we're going to play. But we know behind uh, our minds, I mean, at the back of our minds, that uh, this has to focus. It's going to do a lot to our title defense. We are not taking anything for granted. I mean, the fact that I said we are not under any pressure doesn't mean uh, we are not doing anything at all. We have done a lot. Uh, it's not everything that can be said, but uh, 
we know what to do to be hard to cook, and that is what we have done. Talking about um, what this game means for us, especially if we are winning, we know that uh, we are playing Mediama next week, I, I think on Wednesday. And so if victory is going to be, uh, um, if we are beating Hasselbrook and beating Mediama, perhaps the league will be a done deal. So uh, these two games are very crucial to us. And it's important we concentrate on that which we are playing on Sunday. And then afterwards, we will prepare yet again for Mediama. And so uh, it, is, it is not as if we don't know what this game means. This game is very important to us, and we know that our supporters will be expecting nothing apart from victory, and that is what we have targeted. Jerome, are you winning on Sunday? Of course we are winning. I, I have no doubt in my mind that Kosovo won't win on Sunday. We are winning. Otherwise, we have no business coming to Accra. Uh, it's important for our supporters to understand that the team understands what it means to to play hearts of folk. This is not the first time we are we are playing them. I mean, people have been talking about the fact that Hearts have not lost the game since the beginning of the second round. But what they forget that even us, they've been winning. I mean, their 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 position on the table does not compare to ours. Even though there are those who will tell you that Hearts for soccer matches follow uh, uh, no form guide. We believe that with our position. If we are able to work on a few things in our team, there's no way how to win this game on Sunday. Jerome, we wish you well on Sunday. Thank you very much, Mark. Well, Jerome Motri is a member of the communications team of Kumase Asante Kotoko. He is confident in the side's uh, chances as uh, they prepare for this game on uh, Sunday. And he says they are storming Accra um, tomorrow morning ahead of this game. Well, let's get to see uh, the remaining matches that are going to be played in the Global Premier League later this week. And that should be on the screen pretty shortly uh, as uh, some clubs do battle against uh, each other. Big games, big games coming up later this weekend in the Global Premier League. It's going to be Tama Youth, who will be playing Real Tamale United. Faisal will be playing um, Heart of Alliance. Adriana Stars will be playing Ashgold. Arsenal will play Amidara's Professionals. Mediama Sporting Club will be playing Liberty Professionals. Accra Heart of Oak will be taking on Kumasi Asante Kotoko. And that's going to be the big game later on uh, Sunday. Um, Idubiase is going to be playing in Brekum. Chelsea and Dwarfs will be playing Wa All Stars. Uh, these are matches that are going to be coming up in the Glow Premier League. And I can't wait for this game on a Sunday. The stadium, I'm sure, is going to be filled to capacity for that game involving Kumasi Asante Kotoko and Accra Hearts of Oak. We're still staying with football, but this time around, we are looking at the performance of Ghanaian players in Europe as we build up to those uh, crucial games against Lesotho and um, Sudan. And uh, straight we go to Ukraine and uh, pick up a bet from uh, one Ghanaian player, Derek Abwating. Now, what's the latest on this player? Now, reps of Ghana International, Derek Abwating, have rubbished fresh reports linking the midfielder with a move to Fulham in the summer. Now, the 29-year-old who is uh, fighting his Ukrainian club, Dnipro at FIFA, was on the verge of joining Greek champions Olympiakos in January. Now, reports from the English media thus we claim that Boateng has started negotiations with Fulham over a move in the summer. Now, Boateng's representatives say a line of communication has not been open between Fulham and their client. The move to England could um, be sealed quickly uh, for Boateng if Fulham are interested because the work permit the cottages obtained for him in January is uh, still a valid. We well, would love to see a man making it and making it big uh, in uh, England. Still on Ghanaian players, and this time around we go um, to France and uh, to the camp of Stade Rene, and we're talking about John Boy, of course. Now, what's the latest on the player? Now, we understand that Liverpool are reportedly considering a deal for Stade Rene and Ghanaian international centre-back John Boy this summer as they look to recruit a new centre-half. Now, with Jamie Carragher set to retire from football altogether, um, the club is looking at uh, getting the Ghanaian international into their fold. Now, Boy's strengths lie in his anticipation and positioning. And to illustrate that, his, he averages 3.2 interceptions per game in League R. Now, he's also a great presence aerially and a hard but fair tackler and will be expected to adapt quickly to the more physical 
English Premier League. Well, is Joy going to be signing for that club? Let's wait and see. Still on Ghanaian players now, and this time around, we're going into Italy, and uh, we're going into the camp of the Bianconeri, the Juventus, and uh, definitely, you know, we're talking about Kojo Asamoah. Now, Juventus could clinch their 29th Scudetto on Sunday if they draw with or beat a relegation threatened Paemo. Now, now, that game is going to be played over the weekend uh, at the Juventus uh, Stadium. Now, it's been a rather easy path to glory for the Bianconeri this season, who have managed up to 25 wins, five draws, and just four defeats, and they stand just one point shy of successfully retaining their crown. Now, last week, their celebrations were delayed when Napoli stormed to a 3-0 victory over Pescara. Now, with just three games remaining after Sunday, Juventus would be mathematically confirmed as the season's winners if they get a win on uh, Sunday. And the Ghanaians will be looking forward to seeing another Ghanaian win a league title in uh, Europe. And um, hopefully that man, Kujo Asamoa, is going to be the winner of a league championship. We're staying in uh, Italy, and it's uh, that young kid, um, a free aqua. He scored a uh, Ghana goal um, against uh, Malawi, I recall, um, in a game not too long ago. Now, Ghanaian uh, FIFA agent uh, Oliver Alpha will negotiate with German side TSG Hoffenheim for the release of his client, a free aqua, to Sassilo on loan um, if they get relegated. Now, talks will begin with Sassilo, who are home and dry to play in the Italian Serie A next season. And they have expressed interest in having the experienced young midfielder in their team for the upcoming season. Now, Aqua moved from Parma to Hoffenheim during the last day of the 2013 winter transfer window, but has failed to make a single appearance for the German Bundesliga club. And this has been a source of worry, especially looking at the impressive performances he exhibited in the Serie A. Now, the midfielder is highly recognized in Italy, uh, where he had a fantastic outing with Sicily-based Paemo before moving to Parma. And a signing by Sassilo will be a replacement for Yusuf Chipsa Rachman, who is a heading back to Palmer. Now, we're still going to be staying in Italy, and this time around, we're looking at another young Ghanaian player who is making it big in there. Now, Inter Milan manager Andrea Stramacioni is keen to bring back on loan Ghanaian young star Joseph Alfred Duncan to the San Siro. Now, the 20-year-old has been, has been on cloud nine since he joined Livorno on a season-long loan from Inter at the start of the season. Now, Livorno have not hitting their interest and the player after club president Aldo Spinelli revealed last week that he wanted to keep him for another season. But fresh reports from Italy suggest that Inter are not willing to extend his loan stints with the Dark Reds as Tremacioni is a huge admirer of the talent of this young man. Well, Ghanaian players being courted everywhere by clubs all over Europe. And I uh, will be delighted to see um, these lads move to the biggest clubs in the world and get to showcase their talents. Now, we'll still stay in Italy because another Ghanaian player happens to be on the radar of uh, another Italian club. And this time around, um, it is no other club than Udinese, um, where quite a number of Ghanaian players have honed their talent. Now, Spanish giant and Italian Serie A outfit Udinese are the heels of Ghanaian Tinida Musis Oje for a possible sum, um, summer signing this uh, summer. Now, the diminutive midfielder caught the attention of scouts um, of the Stadio Freely side and the two-time UEFA Cup winners during his impressive outing for the Black Satellites in the just-ended African Under-20 Championship. Now, Oja, who is only 17, is expected to leave for Europe soon as both sides have contacted Tema Youth for his release when the Ghanaian Global Premier League season comes to an end. Now, Udinese may as well gain the upper hand in signing a player, looking at their relationship with Ghanaian uh, sites. And they have uh, since groomed so many Ghanaian players, Mohamed Gagu, Steven Apia, Suli Ali Muntari, Asamoajan, Kujo Asamoa, Rabi Mohamed, and Yimano Ajemai Bidu, who still plays with the club. From one Ghanaian player to another Ghanaian player, and this time around we're looking at Baba 
Abdul Rahman. And now, what's the latest on this player? Now, relegated Bundesliga side Grutaforth have found a replacement for Baba Abdul Rahman in anticipation of the Ghanaian's departure this summer. Now, Nico Gilberman has been identified as the like for like substitute for the Asante Kotoko player. Now, Gilberman from Hanover's under 23 team can play defensively as well as playing offensively. Now, Raban has been linked to a host of stellar European clubs, including German Bundesliga side Schalke 04. We're still keeping tabs on Ghanaian players, and this time around, we are looking at uh, another young kid by name Safo Genfi. Now, what's the latest on this player? Now, Marisberg United's Ghanaian star Frank Safo Genfi is likely to miss the rest of the season with more injury concerns after completing, uh, competing for his country at the recent African Youth Championship. Now, the teenager returned to his South African club from the tournament in Algeria with an injury. Now, the club has revealed that the winger would, could require a lengthy layoff to sort out hamstring and related back problems, uh, coach Ernest Middendorp has reviewed. Ghana last week left Safu Genfi out of the uh, preliminary uh, list of players to go to the Under 20 World Cup in Turkey, which commences in June and in July. We're still staying with our football-related issues. Now, yesterday, the FA Technical Committee um, sat at the offices of the Ghana Football Association to deliberate on the future of the various uh, national teams and how they can, you know, harness uh, the inputs of elite coaches in Ghana to affect the way Ghana plays on the technical front. Well, we caught up with the Technical Committee Chairman of the Ghana Football Association, former FA President Ben Kofi, and this is what he had to say. We start and talk about recent events, that is uh, uh, current events, things that have happened within the last few months in our football. That is results of international meetings and the state of affairs. And when you see the state of affairs, what exactly do you mean? That is taking the results which are crude of the competition into consideration. We wanted to know the state of affairs, that is what actually transpired, culminating in those results. What did the handlers of these national teams tell you? Well, they told us exactly what happened. They told us what we wanted to hear, and uh, we formed an opinion about both of them. And we also made them know what we think about what happened. Can you share some of those information with us? I don't think I can share that now because uh, we will have to submit our report to uh, the mother body. From what you discussed with them, are you looking at making any organizational changes? Oh, not as yet. But we didn't go down. We, we didn't go to that level at all. We just wanted to hear first hand information of what happened. We were interested in the technical aspect of it, to know what went wrong technically. Or, in fact, uh, we were concentrating more on the 6 1 defeat by, by Nigeria with the number 17. And then we talked about the preparation of the under 22, what we think should be done. We talked about the number of players selected, which we thought was not in the right direction. And these are the things we talked and discussed. What, what were the responses of you know, these coaches um, in regards to what you had to share with them? Well, they were, they were forthright. They told us exactly what transpired so that we could actually know what caused things to happen that way. They were forthright. We were very happy with the way they responded to our questions. You know. So we were satisfied with the meeting with them. Technically, going forward, we are done with the 17 and we're looking forward to down the 20. Um, any particular tips you offered to the bosses? Well, uh, we advise them not to contemplate any uh, uh, serious changes in the team which played and qualified for this. And the coach ex ex explained what he wanted, which was also uh, very important to take 
no, 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 no tough. So on the whole, it was a very good meeting. You mentioned the fact that uh, you didn't want any wholesale changes to the squad, but here is a coach who has called up up to um, 40 plus players. Yeah. What, what would have warranted something like that in the first place? Ah, yes, he, he explained it off that uh, there was uh, there was something wrong with that. It, it is not so. He explained what he actually wanted, but not the the, the, the 41 players, which we also didn't like it. So that has been explained off. So if, if, if that's um, enough, then we are looking at sticking with um, Coach Sellers and uh, Yao Prepo for um, Techie 2013, I guess. Oh yes, they, they, they are the coaches. We, we were not thinking of uh, removing anybody. We were thinking of hearing from them, to know their difficulties, to know and also to, for them to explain certain points to us, which they did. So that is fine. What about beefing the technical teams of uh, these sites, as in the scouting area, for example? Well, maybe in future we we'll think about that. Uncle Ben Kofi on the meeting they had uh, with their lead coaches uh, yesterday. He's saying that at this particular point, they are not going to be altering uh, the technical uh, setups of the various national teams. And uh, if for anything at all, they're going to be looking at uh, scouting um, for um, a lot more talent and uh, hopefully um, helping Ghana on a technical footing. We move away from issues of national concerns to some bits of fun games and the Royal House Chapel International uh, on May Day. That's a work they held um, a health walk as part of uh, the church's uh, plans to make sure that their members stay uh, fit. Again, our cameras were there and we bring you action from the Royal House uh, Chapel health walk. Tosh, yeah, take the test off. Church and I came to to have fun with the congregation. Well, what I've noticed is uh, now every morning I go to train with friends, morning and afternoon. And what I used to tell my friends are now you have to be healthy to fight cancer, diabetes and all that. So I think that it's very, it's very interesting seeing people doing the exercise. I think it's very important because you have to stay healthy to, to survive in life. We have, we have a lot of exercises. We have something called Insanity Asylum. The name alone tells you how the training will be. I think it's very difficult, but people like this, they have to start from somewhere. And I think that this training, this training is good for them. But as for Stephen Atta, he's not going to do anything to me. I'm a full member of this church, so whatever we do, you have to participate. So that's why I'm here. Um, wellness, awareness work, uh, as initiated by the man of God and the entire house. It's um, a way of keeping fit because the healthy body is a prolific body. If you're not healthy, you can't be... You can't be usable, you can't be useful. So in as much as it's taking care of spiritual aspect, praying for people, we also need to get fit so that we'll be medically okay. We won't spend much money in the hospital. As you and I know right now, the doctors are on strike, so this is the best way of staying away from sickness, you know. But what is amazing is even though it rained, it rained so heavily, people still came out in their numbers, church members, dedicated church members came to participate in the work. That is what is exciting. For the fans, you know, as you can see me participating in church activities, irrespective of you who you are, I mean, when things like this have been done in your churches, in a small community societies, it's good for you to be part of it to encourage people because it's been interesting you know working and you know dancing and drumming and doing the aerobics it's been fun what we are doing today is called wow program well awareness week it is an awareness week to cause our members to live long we are doing what we call preventive cure we don't want people to wait to have cholesterol, to have diabetes, to have um, whatever name it, before they start spending so much money in preventing it. What we are doing is we want to do preventive cure. In other words, you are well, but you are preventing future sicknesses and future, you know, breaking down. So we came together as a group to support one another, to help one another, to encourage one another, to live long, to live a healthy life, to stay long, and to make sure that we are serving God whilst we are strong. What we are teaching our members is that we are teaching our members to live healthily. It's about exercising and it's about eating well-balanced meals. When you look at the way we eat today, you realize that we eat so wrongly. Too much carbohydrate, too much oil, too much sugar. 
and people are getting sick and are getting older and are getting weaker day by day. So by this program, we are teaching our members how to eat well, how to live well, how to exercise, and then we are teaching our members to live long lives. We have added entertainment, social networking, to, to, to create an environment and an atmosphere for people to relax and to feel like I belong to somebody. We, we have discovered that networking and socializing, uh, according to research, uh, helps you know, defeat loneliness, uh, which also forms about 40% of uh, heart diseases uh, that people go through. So it's not only a five kilometer walk, but it's dancing, music, entertainment, and as usual, the blood screening is on, the eye screening is going on, and uh, this year we are we are we are we are grateful we have a lot of sponsors Well, it's, it's good to stay healthy and uh, stay fit. And I can tell you that there are very fit people in this house, including my um, co-director for this morning's uh, program, Mamia Ajoa Khan. I'm told that she's the fittest lady in this uh, company and that uh, she is on the verge of uh, putting together a team for uh, multi-TV, uh, stroke uh, multimedia, to make sure that everybody stays fit. And I'm told she wants to fund the program as well. So Mamia Ajoa, everything is in your pockets. Make sure that you form the team and I will be glad to join that. And still focusing on our fun games the union savings uh, company also held out uh, some fun games on uh, may day um wet cash day again our cameras were there and we bring you action from the union savings fun games great fun games um organized by union savings and loans um this program is um, a partnership between union savings and loans and several other institutions including hyundai ghana Nizan Ghana Limited, um, appointed time screen printing, and also J Plant Pool. The motivation for this program um, are, in, are in three parts. First of all, um, we believe that to be able to motivate our staff and share a common vision, you know, our vision is to become a bank by 2017. We believe to be able to achieve that, we need to come together more often and fraternize and share the vision. That's the first one. The second one, is um, that it is the right timing um, to announce the official inauguration of our head office, which will be officially inaugurated in uh, mid-May. It's ready, it's at Jowlu. It will be we open in, in mid-May, and we'll announce the official inauguration today to all staff. The third one, of course, is that it's about fitness. We believe that um, you know, to be able to have a sound mind, you need a sound body. And we, so we are organizing this to be able to boost the, the fitness of our staff. Absolutely. I'm excited. Um, it started late, but as you can see, everybody is happy. We are achieving the objectives, as you can see. So I mean, I'm happy about it. As I mentioned earlier, we want to use this platform to, so to say, get closer to our employees and to share our vision with them. You know, so if you ask me what does this symbolize, this, for me, this is what it is. We get closer. We play together. It's about friendship as well. It's not only about work. Um, this, this will be done at least twice every year, but we are also planning to also have a Keep Fit Club for the staff, which will you know, meet every, every weekend. Thank you. We're back from uh, the break, and uh, thus uh, time we'll do some bets on the continent, and uh, we start from the camp of uh, Nigeria, and what's the latest with the uh, Super Eagles? Now, Everton striker Victor Anichebe has put his international career with Nigeria on hold so that he can manage his body accordingly. Now, Lagos-born um, Anichebe, who is uh, 25, has told uh, BBC Sport that uh, for the time being, he does not want to be considered for Nigeria. Now, he had uh, been tipped for a return to the Nigeria squad for June's uh, World Cup qualifiers and Confederations Cup, replacing the injured Emmanuel Eminike. Now, Anichebe has been plagued by injuries over the past few years, including a groin problem on his last appearance for Nigeria in a 2-0 win over Madagascar in 2011. Well, uh, he insists he is proud to play for his country, but for the moment, uh, his Premier League side, Everton, are uh, his uh, priority. Now, former Youth England uh, international 
Ogbon. Nichebe uh, switched allegiance and played his first game for Nigeria in March 2008. He scored on his debut in a 2-0 win over South Africa to help them reach the 2008 Olympics and was then part of the squad that went um, on to win silver in Beijing. We're still staying on uh, some bit of news uh, from Nigeria. And this time around, it has to do with the uh, setting Sunday Imba. Now, Sunday Imba scored the winning goal for Nigeria at the recent African Cup of Nations in South Africa. Now, what's the latest on Sunday Imba? Now, uh, Rangers uh, flew out to Angola for a, ch a CAF Champions League tie on Thursday without Eagle Stars Sunday Imba and Emeka uh, as a due to a passport hassle. Now, both players were on the final 18 man squad for Saturday's Champions League third round second leg match against Recreativo Libolo, but they were dropped at the Mutala Mohamed Airport in Lagos after the German embassy refused to release their passports for them to travel to Angola. Both Emba and Eze were among 12 players from the Nigerian Premier League uh, who last week applied for entry visas to Germany ahead of a Super Eagles training camp in Nigeria, which uh, in Germany, sorry, which begins on May the 16th. The career of this player going from bar to west. He's barely had a looking um, in football after the African Cup of Nations. From uh, the camp of uh, Rangers, we still stay with uh, uh, stories of African interest. And this time around, it has to do with uh, Sunderland's Stefan Sessegnon. Now, what's the story on Sessegnon? Now, Sunderland will be without Stefan Sessegnon for the rest of the season after failing in the appeal against the forwards three-match ban. Now, the 28-year-old was sent off for a challenge on Yakuba Sila in Monday's 6-1 defeat against Aston Villa. Now, Sassanion's suspension rules him out of the remainder of the relegation threatened Sunderland's games at home to Stoke and Southampton and away to Tottenham. Now, Black Hearts manager Paolo Di Canio did not believe it was a bad challenge. Now, the Beninoa International Sassanion, um, who has scored seven goals in 39 games for the West Siders of that season, has been one of the team's best performers of late as they bid to avoid relegation. Defeat by Aston Villa leaves Sunderland five points above the relegation zone, having played a game more than 18 placed Wigan Athletic. Now let's look at matches coming up in the CAF Champions League over the that weekend. Um, this is the third round of the CAF Champions League and it's going to be a do or die issue for most of the clubs in there. That should be on the screen pretty shortly as I will look at the fixtures coming up uh, later the that weekend. Esperance will be playing JSM Bejaya. Start Malian will play um, Cameroon and uh, St. George of Ethiopia will be playing Zamalek. So we Sport will be playing uh, Fuz Rabat. Uh, Rukitivo de Libolo will play in the Nugu Rangers of Nigeria. Atente Sativ of Algeria will play AC Leparts of uh, Congo. Tipisa Mazembe will play Orlando Pirates of uh, DR Congo. And uh, Ali will be playing CA Bezertin. Big games coming up in the CAF Champions League. So the Merseyside Derby is coming up later this week. And let's get to see all the matches that are going to be played in the English Premier League. Uh, that should be on the screen pretty shortly. Some big games coming up uh, this uh, weekend uh, aside the Merseyside Derby. So there you have it. Fulham will play Reading. Norwich will play Aston Villa. Swansea City will play Man City. That game is going to be live here on Joy Sports and Multi TV. Tottenham will play Southampton. West Brom will play Wigan. Uh, West Ham United will play Newcastle United. QPR will play Arsenal. Liverpool will play Everton. Man United will play Chelsea. Big, big games in England this week. And then Sunderland will play Stoke City. Let's move over to Spain now and get to see the matches that are going to be coming up in the Spanish La Liga. Football club Barcelona on the verge of winning the league and uh, Real Madrid also uh, looking at uh, maintaining their European places. So there you have it. These are matches that will come up in the Spanish La Liga. Chelta Vigo will play Athletic Bilbao. Valencia will play Osasuna. Granada will play Malaga. Real Madrid will play Real Valladolid. Deportivo La Coruña will play Atletico Madrid. Mallorca will play Levante. Real Zaragoza will play Rayo Vallecano. Sevilla will play Espanyol. Barcelona will play Real Betis. And Hetafi will play Real Sociedad. Let's uh, move on to the Italian Serie A. And uh, 
There's a story on Mario Balotelli being damned by his uh, girlfriend. Um, even before we go um, into the matches proper, Mario Balotelli, we understand that has been damned by his uh, girlfriend, Fanny Negesha, just days after he said the entire Real Madrid team could sleep with her. Now, model Fanny, 22, moved out of the footy bad boys mansion in Italy following blazing rouse over his joke remark and uh, party. Now, pals say the striker is distraught at Fanny's workout, but has cheered himself by buying up a 200,000 pound Ferrari 450. These guys make unbelievable money. Well, that's uh, Mario Balotelli for you. Now, uh, let's now look at matches coming up in the Italian Serie A, where Juventus are on the verge of winning the Scudetto. Those matches should be on your screen pretty shortly. Uh, matches coming up in the Italian Serie A. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, Kievo Verona will play Cagliari Fiorentina. will play Roma. Udinese will play Sampdoria Milan. will play Torino. Catania will play Siena. Genoa will play U.S. Pescara. Juventus will play Pae Molatti. will play Bologna. Parma will entertain Atalanta. And Napoli will take on Internazionale. We move over to Germany now, and uh, we get to see matches that are coming up in the German Bundesliga. Bayern Munich already crowned their champions in Germany. Those matches should be on your screen uh, pretty shortly. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, Borussia Dortmund, Borussia Mönchengladbach, sorry, will play Schalke 04, Eintracht Frankfurt will play Fortuna Düsseldorf. Hannover 96 will play Mainz Nuremberg, will play Bayer Leverkusen. Stuttgart will play Grutte Fourth. Werder Bremen will play TSG Hoffenheim. The big game. Um, the curtain raise out to the European Champions League final. Dortmund will play Bayern Munich. SC Freiburg will play Augsburg. And Hamburg will play Wolfsburg. Let's go over to France now and get to see matches that are coming up in the French Ligue 1. Again, there we have it. San Etienne will play Bordeaux. Marseille will play Bastia. Montpellier will play Brest. Sochaux will play Lorient. Stade Reims will play AC Adasio. Toulouse will play Leo Troy. Will play Evian Thonon Gaillard. Stade Rene will play Nice. Eyes Nancy Lorraine will play Lyon. And Paris Saint Germain will play Valenciennes. We draw the curtains on this uh, morning's edition of Sports Today. Thanks so much to their entire team, especially um, the two uh, directors in there, uh, Mami Ajwa Khan, together with um, my man Tosh on uh, what transpired on the day. Uh, thank you so much for making uh, things uh, happen. Well, these things happen sometimes. Uh, thank you to the entire production team for making this happening. Monday is the next stop of the program. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.